Hey, it's Mark Striegel. I'm here at Heavy Montreal, and we're going to hear Emily Striegel interview Trevor, the vocalist of the Black Dahlia Murder. This is a fun little chat they had after the Black Dahlia Murder's gig at Heavy Montreal. Wow, what a festival. So many great bands performing at Heavy Montreal. The Black Dahlia Murder, Havoc, Sleep, Marilyn Manson, Limp Bizkit, Intervals, Red Fang, Power Trip, I Hate God, Bad Omens, Trivium, Ginger, Al Storm, Jungle Rot. The list just goes on and on. So much great stuff. Here's Emily Striegel with Trevor from the Black Dahlia Murder. Is it moving? Is it going? I don't know. It's Are red. It's tweaking? It's, the light's Are red. When I talk, it's red. And when you talk, it's red. This is good. <laughs> Are we tweaking out on the levels? Is that a word? Tweaking? Oh, we're tweaking. We're we tweaking. Tweaking hard. <laughs> we're tweaking really hard. Tweaking hard. Um, we're on. I'm, I'm with Trevor from the Black Dahlia Murder. How are you? I'm tweaking hard now. He's tweaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on every drug there is. Are you having a good day today? Uh, yes, I am, actually. Uh, the fest was awesome. It's done. My favorite shows are the ones that we've already done. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a good set? I missed your set because I was oh, here doing I understand. interviews. Hey, man, got got to do your job. I know, you know? right? But it was, was fun. fun. It was really fun. Um, there were some technical difficulties, whatever it happens, but the crowd was so rad. Yeah. They were fool acting and beer spilling and jumping yes. and crowd surfing. And I love it. All that good stuff. I love it. I'm going to go do some beer spilling. And I was sweating. And you were oh sweating. my God. Were you like in the sun? That's the worst thing about yeah, these festivals. Yeah. Can you even see my eyes? I still have the show sweat on my glasses. So it, lo- it looks like I, I'm looking through rock candy no, right can now. See, I, can, <laughs> I can see your, your eyes kind of sort of. I, can, <laughs> I know I have little you, little road eyes. Do you want me to like <laughs> yeah, wash, pull, wash your glasses open? for you? Yeah, I, mean, I, I was thinking more like <laughs> stick a toothpick in each one. Stick a toothpick. I could do it. With, I actually talked about this. Oh, dang. All right. This stick that in my eye. Can you open my eye up with this little this? sword? This is very, very dangerous. Is it pewter? What's going to happen to me? The, this is... Oh, no. That is, that's like the real deal. You saw that. I'm going to need that footage because <laughs> oh, no. a mortal wound <laughs> has been inflicted here. <laughs> We're going to have a lawsuit before we know it. Anyway, you've had a really good year. And I can see I why will, you're uh, feeling pretty cheery. Oh, dude, I will say, I'm glad you said that. I will agree. I've had a great year. I think the band is yeah in a, in a great state right now. The album has been doing tremendously and Nightbringers yes. Nightbringers is the Night album Bringers. it was out at the end of last year yep and it broke the top 40 in the US on Billboard album weird. charts weird hit number 6 <laughs> in Billboard's uh, Billboard's top rock albums chart that's crazy town that's cool that's really really Dude, it, cool it's crazy for death metal you know what I mean like it's it's insane I hope it speaks for the whole state of the, the, the scene you know yeah. I hope that I feel that death metal's an upswing right now. Yeah. Extreme metal. I think maybe in North America it comes with tumultuous times. Well, I know, right? <laughs> I've, I find myself listening to darker music. Yeah, lately. it's um, it's cathartic. Yeah. It's a release, and to to play death metal, it's Olympic almost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. especially with the guitar players and the drummer, I do not envy those guys and what they have to do. Yeah. And. Uh, but once you're done, it's like, yeah, I tortured myself for an hour. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's cathartic, like you said. And I find myself being drunk. We did like a, on the podcast, we did like our favorite albums of 2017. And my list was much, I had much more death metal and darker stuff on my list yeah, than so I ever had before. Yeah, so you're gravitating towards. Um, we are. But you keep it, you tend to, you, but your, your personality, you have, you have like the yin and the yang because, yeah, it's, because like sitting down here with you, I'm like, okay. Yeah. See, I'm a fan first kind of. So I don't know. I just, I've always seen it that way. Like we're, our band is a bunch of lucky fans. So I don't know. Like I'm still buying a million records. I get death metal CDs almost awesome. every day of my life. Awesome. I'm that old man stuck in buying physical copies. And what about know. vinyl? Vinyl. I think it's awesome. I love how it sounds too, like having the entire spectrum. And uh, yeah. but I do not need to start another Vice. <laughs> right. I have like somewhere in the neighborhood of four thousand metal CDs. Oh, that's insanity! So, like, and do mostly extreme metal. So like that's my you know, 
I'm I, I'm still doing it. Do you still have like a CD player in your car and stuff? Like, uh, how do I don't you have do a car. This? Honestly, I don't listen to them yeah. off the CD that much anymore, which is kind of a sad thing to say. But I'm always ripping CDs, which even is archaic okay. now. You yeah. know. <laughs> but um, I can't just rely on a streaming service. Like there's they don't oh, cover God. everything. They don't have everything. Oh my God. They never will. You know. I um, know. Can and, wait, uh, how do you feel about streaming services in general? Like it's, it has its bonuses. Like I mean. I still have Spotify, so I can play the weirdest 80s song of all time at a party. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I guess. Um, I don't want to be so grumpy that I'm like, you know what I mean? I don't want to be one of those guys. There's some, but hate, some big haters it makes, out there. It makes me grumpy as a listener when I feel like I'm. it's not lucrative for for the people I want to support. Well, but yeah, I, I, I think like there's a the misnomer technology. about it. We love the technology too, but there's a misnomer. People think that uh, metal bands are getting paid out by it, and that it's they're just not. You know what I mean? So it's just it's rough. But, totally. Um, I so love it's the exposure. And it's merch. Like, how yeah, are you even um, making a living? Basically, anymore? you know, it's touring and merch. It's yeah. that's our world. That's um, you know, the the income for the band. We tour a lot, but we're also kind of self-sustained in a way yeah. but we have to tour to make it yeah. work you know what i mean yeah. and uh also we don't want to quit touring at all because uh look how, how good going hard paid off you know what i mean yeah. like uh yeah. we're very thankful to be here and eight albums deep to have this be the biggest one it's just it's awesome it's amazing it's so, insanity yeah so Are, so what about the formula is working we must keep going <laughs> working <laughs> <laughs> what about touring so are you going overseas yeah we have um europe you know, uh, the festival run, which we've done countless times, which yeah. is awesome. Uh, it's just like today. It's just playing outside. It's fun, right? In a right? tent, million people, spilling beer everywhere. and just um, sweating your sweating. balls off. Yeah. Yeah. I can say sweating your balls off. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> sweating my <laughs> Tell balls. <laughs> Talk to me about Metal Blade. Because Metal Blade rules. We've been Metal Blade through and through since day one. Okay. They've put so much energy into advertising and taking care of us. That it's always been s such a family affair. Like, I know the people that work there. Yeah. When we go out to L.A., they're all there, and we get them trashed, and, you know, we yeah. hang out. Like, it's... Nice. I, I feel so Brian. bad for... S yeah, Brian's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's the coolest guy he ever. Is. He is. Bailey. Yeah. You know, everybody that works there is yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Our publicist, Nikki's amazing. Just yeah. Every Vince is a man with eight arms and six brains. Like... <laughs> That's like awesome. it's a family affair there, you know, and yeah. they love us and they they give us so much and work hard for us. So we've been lucky. And I, I was about to say, I don't envy a lot of our peers that have had to shift labels. And I can't imagine meeting a whole new team. Right. And like, you know what I mean? Do they have, have the enthusiasm? Right. You know what I mean? Like it's we're so fortunate, dude. To we've be been very lucky. Yeah, always. But, but do they they don't have any influence in the do they have creative input? Like, do they? Hear no, what no. You're doing they and say, they, okay, I, they trust direction. us. To okay. do what we're going to do. And yes. we're just independent in that way. We've always have yeah. been. You know what I mean? And uh, they know that we won't settle for what, you know, like yeah. in the studio and stuff like that. And um, it's an honor to be respected in that way by them, too. But, you know, they they know we're going to go make a Black Dahlia murder record. You know cool. what I mean? Big props to, to Metal Blade. So one question I like to ask in my interviews is I always like to talk about like your your not even influences but albums that meant something to you not your favorite album it doesn't have to be your favorite album but like i did this thing on i hate facebook but like just get away from all the political stuff i was like i'm just gonna post i'm gonna do that game like right. albums they're not the best albums but they're the albums that influence right. me give me a couple okay uh, first thing that comes to mind for me this is the most obvious in my life is uh countdown to extinction the oh! megadeth record that oh was my one of my first that was Wait. I heard the Black Album before that, and Nirvana kind of led me to kind of want heavier stuff. Countdown and, is yeah, so good. It's so good. good. I get ragged on because I always say it's one of my favorite Megadeth Oh, dude. But it's also our age, I think, because I'm yeah, like, it I think was, we're probably about the same age. I'm 37. Thing. Fart I'm, and dust. I'm older than you, but anyway. I'm, <laughs> but it was like, this is when I fell in love with Megadeth. Right. You know, like it was in high school for me. Oh, dude, so. I mean, that's the, vocally, that's by, by far the best record they did. Yeah. Um... The deep cuts, the ones that aren't the singles are the best tracks. If you don't know that, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to Ashes yeah. in Your Mouth. That's the sickest song ever, yeah. the last song on the record. God. The Closure of a Dream. Yeah. yeah uh, well, Megadeth, like, recently they like tweet, like tweet tweeted, like, what's your favorite track on that album? And, and I was like, it's Ooh, so hard. Yeah, for me, it's Ashes in Your Mouth, yeah. that last song. That's yeah. like, 
the ultimate song about album. war. It's so climactic, that whole like drum fill fade out. The, it's their best lineup, Nick Menza. Yeah. You know, Marty. Oh my Forget gosh. about it. Yeah. Um, Architecture of Aggression, third track. Very underrated song, also. Very sick. Yeah. The entire uh, album. Yeah. It's, it's this a was my life. I'm so proud you so said good. That. Love that shit. I did too. Love it. This is actually, I did a solo episode once and I talked about albums that influenced me and that was one of the, I played, he also says, I played um, a song off. He yeah. says man pussy in a song. He does? That. He's talking about jail. That. There's that jail song oh, I never about, that. you know, like fighting for position in jail. Yeah. And, um, he says man pussy. Yeah. He says before he got there, his man pussy was oh sold. God. He was already that's sold. That's not a mustain. It was, it was, that is a mustain. It was tra- he was traded for a pack of cigarettes before he even got there. <laughs> and when I was 10, I could not understand what the hell he was talking about. But you see a few prison shows and you'll, you'll come around. <laughs> you'll come around. <laughs> on that note, man, you're fun, Trevor. We need to have you back on again soon. Uh, I'll come back. Are you going to hang out tonight? Are you around? Are you guys, yeah, I'll be are around. I'm out? hanging out to see Emperor. Everyone's I'm here I'm drinking to see these Emperor. things. A and whatever you give me. Canadian? All right. We'll, we'll hang later. Thanks so much for coming on Talking Metal. Yes. <laughs>